Last week in Southern Labor is the segment where every week we talk about what happened last week in Southern Labor in the South among working people. Jonah Furman releases a newsletter every week called Who Gets the Bird on Substack, and that is a list of basically everything that happens in the labor movement across the United States. So we go through that list with his permission, with his cooperation, and take out the things that happened in the South and give it to you, the listener. So we're going to start off with some internal union politics. This is a huge story that is going to affect tens of thousands of workers in the South and hundreds of thousands across the country for labor notes. Jonah Furman reported on the once-in-a-generation breakthrough in the United Auto Workers Union where members overwhelmingly voted to implement the right to elect top officers via a direct election system. One member, one vote. This is the end of a decades-long road to win this fight, which members have fought since at least the early 1980s, and the beginning of a new one, namely a United Auto Workers Union with meaningfully competitive elections for the top slots which control all the meaningful national bargaining, namely the big three automakers whose contracts are all up in 2023, just six weeks after the massive UPS Teamsters contract. So that's going to be an interesting one. In legislation, Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards is shooting for the state's teacher salaries to hit hit the regional average by 2024. That's very ambitious, which would be something like a $3,600 raise. Wow. Louisiana teachers are getting screwed, um, (laughs) as are teachers across the country, if we're being honest. In new organizing... We have 25 fast food workers at Tudor's Biscuits in Elkview, West Virginia. They are unionizing with UFCW Local 400 after having marched on their bosses. 32 DHS security guards in D.C. voted 7-0 to to join the SPFPA. 18 workers at MDS Boring and Drilling in Houston voted 0-13 to to decertify their union, the Operating Engineers Local 450. 85 workers for first student in Memphis voted overwhelmingly 37-3 to to join Teamsters Local 667. 50 workers at Intermodal Mexico in Jacksonville, Florida voted 37-3 to to join Teamsters Local 512. And 41 workers who make paint polymers for Estron Chemical in Calvert City, Kentucky, voted 28 to 13 to join the Machinists Union. And finally, 14 heavy equipment operators at Fort Bliss, Texas, voted 9 to 0 to join the Operating Engineers Local 351. Real quick, I just wanted to say, I think that's great news out of West Virginia. Those of us in the South, we love our biscuits, don't we? And uh, it'd be great to be able to uh, shop and buy biscuits from a union uh, restaurant. So, way to go, guys. Yes, absolutely. Way to go. In strikes and bargaining, we've got lots happening on the BCTGM Kellogg strike over the past two weeks. As I mentioned, first, the the company announced that they would hire permanent replacements, and probably thinking that this would strike fear into the workers' hearts, they soon thereafter offered a new tentative agreement. And the workers overwhelmingly rejected that offer. Kellogg's has doubled down on its commitment to hire permanent replacements since then. The Tuscaloosa County judge, who hates free speech, has, in his beneficence, granted the coal miners the ability to have two people on the picket line at one time. After more than a month of banning picketing outright, with barely a word from the media, The Cabell Hospital strike in Huntington, West Virginia has ended with members of 1199 SEIU, West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, ratifying a contract. After weeks on strike, the 450 workers with Steelworkers Local 40, also in Huntington, do not have a contract. And Special Metals, who owns the nickel alloy plant being struck, are not in a rush to get back to the table, setting the next negotiation session for December the 14th. So those people have been on strike for several weeks, and it looks like it's going to last for a while longer. 10,000 other workers are staring down a potential strike at Newport News, Virginia, Huntington Ingalls Shipyard. 
after members of the Steelworkers' biggest local, USW Local 8888, voted down a contract 2-1. to one. Now the local is telling members to prepare to be on the picket line in 2022, which would be the first strike at the shipyard since 1999. At the other big Ingalls shipyards in Pascagoula, Mississippi, members of the Metal Trades Council, which includes United Association members and the Boilermakers, as well as a few others, apparently rejected a contract and then had to re-vote on it and then accepted it. But the IBEW members in Mississippi voted it down again. Around 100 IBEW local 666 maintenance workers at a DuPont plant in Chesterfield County, Virginia, that make Tyvek and Kevlar and other materials have been locked out by management. As negotiations stall, nearly 1,000 UFCW local 1995 poultry processing workers at Wayne Farms in Albertville, Alabama voted to reject a contract offer after having walked off the job to protest the weak raises on offer along with forced overtime. Major League Baseball has officially locked out the MLB Players Association as of this week. They removed all active player-related content from their website, making for an eerie baseball without baseball players ghost town vibe. After much back and forth, including a contract that was overwhelmingly rejected by membership, the Louisiana, Fe- uh, the Louisville, the Louisville Federation of Police has a new union contract that includes bigger raises and no new reforms. Uh, so you know, look, folks, that is uh, that. That's the you know, unions are human institutions, and as uh, human institutions, they have flaws. And boy, are police unions flawed! Holy crap! Uh, and that's because I mean they're made up of police, so you know. I, I think it's worth <laughs> mentioning that it, it's certainly a controversial thing inside the labor movement as to whether or not police unions really count, for that matter, as, as right. labor unions because. The job of a police officer is obviously very different than the job of, you know, a poultry worker, a factory worker, a teacher, a nurse. Uh, you know, it's a different form of selling your labor, obviously. And, of course, as a police officer, you have something that the vast majority of workers don't have, which is the authority, uh, both legal and sometimes illegal, to hurt people. Yeah, to kill people uh, and get away with it. I mean, look right. at what the cops in Alabama are doing with the miners' strike. They are, um, they're literally, we're using state tax dollars to, um, to escort, like it's a damn emergency, scabs uh, through the picket line to the mines. I mean, and, and the, like, people, striking miners have gotten tickets in Brookwood for being in front of a scab escort and going the speed limit. These scabs are being escorted like zipping through places at unsafe speeds, certainly over the speed limit, and people who are being responsible and going the speed limit are being given tickets for going the speed limit because they're in front of a scab escort. That's your tax dollars at work, folks. And that's what the police do. I mean that's what the uh, that's what the police do, you know. If 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 their police if the police unions down in Brook Brookwood, in Tuscaloosa, if they had any solidarity, if they had any concept of themselves as workers, they would not be doing that. They would be refusing the orders and they would be supporting the coal miners. But they see their you know they see their their allegiance does not li- lie with other working people by and large. So. Yeah, and real quick, I wanted to back up on on your last week in Southern Labor Report. Uh, how awesome is Local Six Six Six? I feel like you know, just just with the local name alone, management must uh, you know quiver a little bit when they walk to the table. So, yeah. uh, shout out to those folks out in Virginia, and uh, it, it was good to see uh, some action happening here in North Alabama over at Albertville. And, uh, you know, I think I mentioned this to you last week. We definitely are seeing labor activity in the sports world uh, with the baseball players. And, uh, you know, something I've brought up before that's just so true is that growing up, 
I, I think the only times I ever heard about unions on the news was on ESPN mm-hmm. uh, in reference to, you know, Major League Baseball, NFL, NHL, those folks. So uh, even though they are highly compensated at the top levels, I think it's worth remembering the distinction between the athletes and the owners. Right. And, and in these, these scenarios, they are workers. Right. Uh, they are selling their labor uh, at, at a high cost to their body and for a short, very short career span. And uh, in baseball in particular, we've seen a lot of issues with the minor league baseball players. Uh, right. You know, here in Alabama, of course, we have the Birmingham Barons. We have the Rocket City Trash Pandas. Uh, they're big tourist attractions, big, you know, local venues. Mm-hmm. Uh, but many of these athletes are being, you know, poorly paid, uh, living in pretty crappy conditions uh, just for the hope that one day they can make it big. Right. You know, if they're lucky, maybe they will. Uh, but statistically, clearly, they're not all going to go out and make uh, Bryce Harper kind of money. Right. Uh, Freddie Freeman kind of money. They're not all going to go down that road. And so... Uh, shout out to the athletes for uh, for organizing and, and best of luck with their efforts uh, dealing with this lockout. Hopefully they get a fair contract. Yeah, absolutely. Solidarity with Major League Baseball players and uh, IBEW Local 666. Uh, we've got a listener out of that local and he sent me a few stickers a while back. I uh, If people have... Um have seen me in person with my laptop they may have seen uh they may have seen it they they really uh lean in i don't know like who na- like, i mean the local's been around for ages uh i looked into its history a while back because i saw it, and they sent me uh the, the fellow sent me some stickers with like a little devil on it and stuff it's really cool um so yeah very cool ibw local 666 <laughs> work sucks we know but you can make it better by organizing with your fellow workers. For more information, call or text the Huntsville Industrial Workers of the World at 256-651-6707. 